Okay, so here we have something new. This is Hasbro's Epic Hero Series, X-Men 97, Marvel's Rogue. How do we turn this? There we go. Yeah, Marvel's Rogue. Because apparently they can't copyright her name, so they have to call her Marvel's Rogue so they can copyright it. That's the kind of thing that happens. That's the sort of thing we got to deal with in our modern world to make sure we don't get sued for using the name of the character that, you know, she's been named for, like, over 40 years at this point, I think. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I haven't opened any of these yet, uh, but this is the first one that I bought. Apparently, Hasbro is getting back into a three and three quarter inch game as far as Marvel superheroes go. And uh, that's a good thing because I was a big fan of the uh, the old Marvel Universe three and three quarter inch figures. And I don't think these are going to be as high quality as those, but they are certainly going to be better articulated than those uh, uh, five points of articulation figures that they have that they're selling for like basically the same price as this. I think this is maybe like maybe like a dollar more. But uh, Spin Master for many years has been putting out some pretty decently articulated three and three quarter inch superhero figures. I've got Wonder Woman here, so we can, uh, I figure she'd be a good one to compare with Rogue. Since they're both female figures. Uh, they've been putting those off for several years, and I've been saying, why can't Hasbro do that with their Marvel characters? So uh, hopefully she should be pretty good. She looks pretty good to me in the package. Looks to have some decent articulation. Not as good as the old Marvel Universe, but I'm hoping at least as good as the Spin Master figures. So, but we're going to find out today. Uh, got some artwork. I'm guessing that's, uh, you know, from the new X-Men 97 cartoon that's supposed to be on Disney+. Plus. Uh, most of these designs look okay to me. I'm not sure what's up with Storm's hair. It's like, it's like they wanted to give her the mohawk, but they didn't want to actually give her a mohawk. So she's got this kind of like, hairstyle that's neither fish nor fowl as far as that goes and she's wearing like still the 90s costume which if she's gonna wear the mohawk she should wear like the costume she had in the 80s like the punk rock looking costume i don't know so i don't know what's up with storm in that design so it could be worse so i'm not going to complain about it too much but i'm not sure what they're going for with that uh rogue looks appropriate she looks Cute is that character ought to look. Uh, Wolverine, Cyclops, uh, Gambit, they all look very authentic to those 90 designs. Uh, here's like the whole team over here. Well, most of them. I mean, uh, at least as far as like the, the 90s cartoon goes, I think that's pretty much everybody. I don't see Professor X on there, but, you know, maybe he's taking the picture. I don't know. And Morph looks a lot more like his uh, his Age of Apocalypse counterpart. So I'm kind of wondering what the story is with Morph there. Morph being a character that was actually created for the cartoon so that they could have a character to kill off in the first episode that wasn't actually like a character from the comics that had a fan following. So, of course, Morph wound up being really popular and gaining a fan following. To the point where they had to make up a character in the comic books. <laughs> but yeah, there's a not seen on the front. We have Beast, Morph, Bishop, and uh, the code nameless Jean Grey. So uh, speaking of like unnecessary haircut changes, Bishop also looks like he got a haircut. Which, you know, I guess maybe they thought the Jerry Curl mullet was a little too 80s for a 90s character. <laughs> but but to me that's kind of part of his look you know maybe that style came back in in the future you don't know <laughs> nobody knows yet <laughs> what if mullets become like really popular again yeah. actually I think like probably the future for characters in the 90s would probably be like uh, you know the 2010s I guess Bishop would have been from the 2010s so but it was the Marvel Universe, so maybe, you know, in his alternate timeline, mullets became more popular in the 2010s. I mean, we certainly didn't have, uh, you know, 
this uh, uh, post-apocalyptic world where mutants were kept in concentration camps. I didn't notice it anyway. So anyway, let's go ahead and open up. Oh yeah, here's here's the piece of artwork over on the side, which is the same piece of artwork, but we get a better look at it on this side. So I think that covered pretty much all of the packaging. There's no cross-sell artwork. There's no bio. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Let's go ahead and open her up. So we have in here little wadded up paper with her accessory on it. We're going to set that aside for now. We got a little uh, paper. This is probably just some legal mumbo jumbo. I don't care about warning, choking hazard, whatever. I'm not going to eat it. You know, <laughs> Nothing in this package is going in my mouth if I can help it. So let's go ahead and get her out. And we got a little little cardboard tray with lots of little plastic tabs holding her in. Lots of little plastic tabs. A ridiculous amount of plastic tabs. She does not need this many plastic tabs. I don't care if there's a big hole in the package where you can reach in and actually touch the figure. I think, like, just, you know, putting a few plastic tabs around her would, would be sufficient, not the ridiculous amount they have around her. All right, so there we go. She's out of the package. And it says underneath, epic gear inside. It has an arrow pointing down to where in the package there would have been, uh, you know, the accessory. But, of course, she's in front of all this stuff, and I can't really see it that well, especially when it's in the box. So the only way I can read this stuff is to take it out of the package and take the figure off a little cardboard tray. And, of course, if I do that, like you saw the first thing that, that happened when I opened it up is, Oh, here's the accessory. So I don't need you to tell me that now. <laughs> Odd design choice. It does have like a little bit of an X-Men logo behind it, but the, it's kind of obscured by this uh, lighting effect that they have on there and then the big blue arrow. But I think even on camera, you can kind of tell that's supposed to be an X-Men logo behind her. So the other figures I saw of her at the store at Walmart was where I saw these. Uh, the other ones I've seen so far is Wolverine and Cyclops. And I, I didn't really want to spend too much money. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to get caught up on some things. So uh, I decided, like, uh, you know, I can only buy one of these. I'm going to pick uh, Rogue because I don't have a Rogue for the aforementioned Marvel Universe figures. I never managed to get a Rogue. Even the 80s version. Like, I don't think they ever did the 90s version. I know they did an 80s version, and I never got around to picking her up, unfortunately. But uh, this is the one that's considered, I think, to be the most iconic of her looks. The, the Jim Lee 90s costume. And personally, I'm more of a fan of like the 80s one, specifically like where she was wearing like an all black leotard with like some spiked belts and a dog collar and little green torn tank top over it, little green gloves. That was the rogue that that like I fell in love with when I was a kid. And this Jim Lee design, you know, it's not bad. I like it just fine. I'm not trying to knock it, but it came along like a little bit later into like you know my 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 fandom of x-men like i think i was in high school at that time so I, I do probably have like you know some affection for it at that age you know what i mean i'm just gonna leave that there this is not a show for kids so uh so yeah uh i think for for most people not everyone and and i'm not included in this although i do appreciate this costume most people, if you say rogue, this is probably going to be what they think of instantly. This is going to be the, the the version of her that most fans are going to be like, oh yeah, with the bomber jacket and the headband and yellow and green spandex number and the high boots. And this is going to be the one that they're going to think of. And uh, I have a lot of respect for this design because it is uh, it is her most recognizable design. So, again, to compare with Spin Master figures, uh, I got Wonder Woman here, and we can see that Wonder Woman is slightly taller than Rogue, and that's probably as it should be. Like, I'm not sure how tall Rogue is supposed to be. 
I might go back and check in the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. But I know that Wonder Woman is supposed to be like a particularly tall woman, at least in the rebirth continuity. So that's how that's how she stacks up there. And for anybody curious as to how she would stack up against a male figure from the Spin Master line, about the same. I want to say Superman and Wonder Woman are about the same height. Yep, they're about the same height. So, but that's fine because Superman, it, like I said, Superman's like six four. Uh, Wonder Woman should probably be about the same height as Superman, at least in that continuity, I believe. And she's a little bit taller than Batman. But we're talking a lot about DC characters in uh, in a Marvel unboxing, and, and specifically this character. So let's check out her articulation, because like I said, this is an all-new line to me. I don't really know much about the articulation, so we're going to learn about it together. So she's got a head, seems to be on a ball joint. And uh, this is already off to a good start because this is, uh, she's got a good range of motion, I think, for a character with such long hair. I think you can even rotate her head all the way around. How about that? That's pretty cool. That's that's not something you see too, even in a six inch figure a lot of the times, uh, a character with long hair that will hinder the, the head movement. So kudos to them on that. That's some good engineering there. Probably the head will pop off pretty easily, I would imagine. Yep, that's what the ball joint looks like underneath. So uh, anybody who's considering using these uh, heads, like like taking a, a rogue head and putting it onto uh, like a, another three and three quarter inch figure, like maybe a, a GI Joe, like like one of the the three and three quarter inch GI Joes or a Marauder Task Force or something like that. It might fit on there pretty well. You might have to put something in there to fill it out. I don't know. I, I haven't actually compared the peg size yet. But it might be something, if, if you're wanting one of these heads for customs for another figure, it might work pretty well. So uh, then we got the arms. So let's check out the arms. And the arms do rotate all the way around. But as you can see, the shoulders, because of the jacket, they kind of stick out a little bit. So uh, it's going to kind of affect her articulation there and it kind of rotates in more of a diagonal fashion just because of that uh arms can move up about that far again the jacket kind of gets in the way a little bit i should point out that traditionally this is supposed to be a brown jacket and they made it kind of more of a darker green jacket and it's been a long time since i've watched the 90s x-men cartoon so i don't remember if that's accurate to the 90s cartoon but in the comic, it was certainly supposed to be a brown jacket. And the original Rogue action figure, which would have been uh, a tie-in with the animated show just as much as the comic book, uh, just because that was how things were done back in the 80s and the 90s. Is you, you tied in your, your cartoon with a toy line. Uh, that one certainly had a brown jacket. I remember that. But uh, I think it looks good. It still, to me, feels like that old Rogue design, even though... Like I said, the jacket is a slightly different color, maybe from what we're used to. So uh, let's continue to talk about her articulation. So her elbow articulation got about 90 degrees, a little more than 90 degrees on her right arm. So uh, left arm, not qu not quite as far as far as the articulation goes. So I guess she's definitely right-handed. Speaking of which, her her uh, left hand is a solid fist, and her right hand has a little bit of a grip to it. Gambit should be grateful for that. This is not a show for kids. Uh, <laughs> keep the gloves on. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to make any more dirty jokes, I, I promise. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, uh, there's no torso articulation whatsoever. There's no waist swivel. There's no, uh, you know, rockin' McFarlane uh, torso articulation. And again, I think that this is this is pretty much, you know, comparable with a Spin Master figure uh, of the same scale. So, so, so far, the, the they're equal in terms of articulation. But we're going to keep going because, uh, you know, so. All the arm articulation is similar to Spin Master. The head articulation is a little bit better, I think, than the Spin Master because 
even though technically this is a ball joint, it doesn't really get that kind of side to side kind of movement. And her head certainly doesn't go all the way around because the hair kind of hinders it. So, so far, this is a better articulated figure than the Spin Master figure, but but only just so. So they're 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 pretty much in the same ballpark, I think. So uh, her legs can go up about that far. Knee bends about that far. Now, uh, here's where I think the Spin Master figure is a little bit better because the Spin Master figure uh, it does have that thigh cut, so her thigh can swivel all the way around, whereas Rogue has no thigh cut whatsoever. And to add to that, uh, the knee articulation is different because you can see where on this one, kind of the, I'm having a hard time trying to think of how to explain this, but the ball joint is on the lower part of the leg. So just under where the knee is. So we can not only kick her leg back like that, but we can also rotate the leg all the way around. And that gives us a little more articulation as far as that goes. However, since this one, uh, the, the ball joint is actually on the upper part of the leg. So we can kick her leg all the way back like that, but we can't rotate it around that way. Now that having been said, we can, we can rotate the, the leg around this way because that's where the ball joint is. But you don't really need to do that on this figure because she's got a thigh cut. So which one is better? It's kind of hard for me to say because uh, I think I would probably rather she had the, the, the way that the Spin Master figure set it up where the, the ball joint is on the lower part of it. That just seems to make more sense to me as far as, uh, as, far as a figure on this scale goes. And also, to me, I'm, I'm kind of worried that's going to be kind of a delicate joint. So be careful with it, especially just out of the package. Now, mine, that joint isn't too tight, but it might wind up being too tight on yours. And if it is, remember not to force it. Just kind of gently coax it and try to get it to, to move into place gently. And if you can't get it to move, apply some heat to it. Use a, a hair dryer or dipper in some, some warm water for a little bit. And hopefully that should uh, get it into, into shape. And she has kind of a wedge heel. So uh, no high heels on her. She's just got kind of a wedge heel. So, uh, but I think that's appropriate for a superheroine. Oh, and uh, the, the legs are ball jointed. She can do the splits, no problem. There we go. So good articulation, about comparable to a Spin Master figure of the same scale. But I think that Spin Master is just slightly better once we get to the leg articulation because it does have that thigh cut and it does have the uh the the way that the knees i think works better with the spin master so if i got to compare the two uh hasbro's three and three quarter inch superhero versus spin masters three and three quarter inch superhero i'm, I'm still gonna have to say that spin master is still doing the best as far as that goes, as far as what's currently on the shelves. Now, an old Marvel Universe figure would have blown this one away, but uh, we're, we're comparing it to what we can currently buy on the shelves right now. You could probably go into Walmart and find this Rogue figure and this Wonder Woman figure if we consider that they were, like, fully stocked. So, uh, so... You know, out of what you could buy right now, this is a better articulated figure than this one, but only kind of barely. You know, just just like like everything from the waist up is is uh, if we were just judging by from the waist up, I would say that that Hasbro nailed it from the waist down. It is definitely Spin Master, but I think that the quality of the the articulation of the figure from the waist down on the Spin Master is is just enough to, to edge out the Hasbro figure. Uh, so there you go. There you have it for anybody wondering about that, which was certainly something that, that I was thinking about when I first saw this is like, uh, like I said, to me, these seem like they're figures that are going to be kind of on a par with, with spin master. And they probably got some bugs to work out and they might even be able to, uh, to, to improve upon it as the line continues. Also, another thing I noticed is that her hair is, like, really red. 
like the kind of red that I would make a, a Batgirl figure. Actually, I've got a Batgirl figure right here. So we got another figure we can compare it to. So uh, here we go, as far as height goes. Uh, she looks to be about the same height as Batgirl. So maybe a little bit taller, but just because of the hair. So yeah, Wonder Woman is, is definitely taller than Batgirl, who's a, a female character in the same line. Kind of, sort of. I mean, like, technically, one's DC superheroes and one's Batman, but just Batman has his own line because, you know, you're going to sell more Batman toys just because the vehicles and play sets and everything. You're, you're, you're going to have a, a Batmobile and a Batcave and all that kind of stuff, so he might as well just have his own subline. So I've been talking about this figure enough that we could probably call it a day, but we still do have an accessory to go over, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And uh, kind of like with uh, with those Spin Master figures, she basically has an accessory that's just kind of a, a little doodad that just kind of adds a little bit of flavor to the character. And as we can see, it's just something that just kind of attaches to her, her, uh, her arm to make it more of a power punch kind of look. Just a little something to, you know, add to the figure. So there, it's it's got kind of a swirliness to it, which makes me kind of think of, like, Popeye's twister punch. So, like, maybe she wound up her wrist and <laughs> hits Magneto or whoever. So, but yeah, her hair is, like, really red. And I'm used to Rogue as being a little more sort of auburn red, you know, like, where it's, it's just kind of on the browner side of red. But it still looks good. And I figure anybody who, who would be like enough of a purist about it could probably repaint her fairly easily. And, oh, now I'll just paint her, her jacket and her belt brown and paint her hair more auburn. And, but I don't, I don't really care that much. I think she looks, she looks about right. You know, she, close enough, I ain't going to complain. So get ready. So, yeah. So, uh. I, I do notice also is uh, that the you know she's got like the yellow stripe down the front of the outfit, but on the back of the outfit for some reason they didn't put the yellow stripe onto uh, her 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 booty. So she's got the yellow stripe on her pants, but it doesn't go all the way up the rest of the uniform. So that's kind of strange looking. So like there was something about it that was off, and I couldn't quite place it. And then I remembered that meme that was talking about how awesome and detailed that Apocalypse's armor is. And uh, then I'm like, oh yeah, that's why that doesn't look right to me. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I definitely recommend uh, this figure, and I'm definitely going to support this line because uh, I think she looks really cool. I think the articulation is, is really good, so I'm happy to have well-articulated three and three quarter inch Marvel superheroes figures on the shelf again. Now, granted, again, not quite as well articulated as those, those uh, Marvel universe figures, which uh, I do enjoy those quite a bit. Uh, and, and was hoping they would get back to doing something kind of similar to that one day. And now they have. So even though it's not quite on that par, it's close enough that I'm like, yep, I'm happy with this. So uh, I will definitely be supporting this line and picking up the rest of the characters. Now, like I said, uh, when I saw this in the store at the time, I also saw Cyclops and Wolverine. And I got her because I figured, like, I don't have a Marvel Universe figure of her. So I would definitely like to have a, a rogue figure. If I'm only able to get one, that's the one I'm going to get. And I was hoping that I would be able to get uh, Cyclops and or Wolverine. Uh, once uh, once I got paid, I probably would have got Wolverine if I had to choose between the two. Uh, but uh, by then, these figures had sold out quick, so I was not able to get them. But I'm sure they're going to get restocked again at some point. I'm not too worried about it. And uh, there's also going to be the Blackbird jet that's going to come with Storm. So I'm looking forward to picking that one up as well. And since I saw the X-Men figures, I also saw some Spider-Man figures in this format where they had uh, both Peter Parker and Miles Morales. And they also had Venom, which, you know, I'm not too big a fan of Venom, honestly, as far as Spider-Man villains go. 
but I'm enough of a fan of Venom, I'll probably still pick him up. And I also saw uh, uh, some Avengers ones with uh, Hulk and Thor and Iron Man and uh, the, the Sam Wilson version of Captain America. So uh, I definitely want to pick all of those up. And I hope they do a Steve Rogers Captain America too, because, you know, Steve's my guy. You know, that's, that's my favorite Marvel superhero. Uh, I do like Sam Wilson as Captain America. Don't get me wrong. But to me, you know, like I said, Steve's my guy. So uh, <laughs> I, I would definitely want to have both. And I would want to have a figure of uh, Sam as the Falcon also. I think that would be really cool. So hopefully they'll, they'll do that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to support this line. Uh, I'm pretty happy with, with how this figure turned out. And uh, I will have more of these in the future, certainly. So, and especially if you're someone, like I said, that, that already is uh, collecting the Spin Master figures, like these would be good Marvel figures to, to go with the, the DC figures. It's always nice to me to have Marvel figures and DC figures that are compatible with each other. I always, I always like to have that. So it's, it's two different companies and two different universes and they're, they're competitors and whatnot. That's, that's true. But, uh, but I, I still enjoy having them crossover from time to time. That's all. That's always fun. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. It's a little longer than usual, but that's because like, I'm, this is just the first figure in this line that I've, I've had a chance to look at. So of course I want to, you know, kind of review the line while I'm reviewing the figure. So uh, at least to start off with. Now, when we get into the male figures, then, you know, of course, I'm going to wind up comparing those to Spin Master figures again, because, you know, we just want to see how they stack up. So, uh, but which figure is that going to be? You're just going to have to tune in in a future episode to find out. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and all the fun to YouTube stuff down below. Let me know what you think about this figure and uh, Rogue in general. What's your favorite look for Rogue? Is it this one? I'm guessing most people are going to go with this one. Uh, like I said, I like that 80s kind of punk rock look to her. Uh, I like uh, the X-Men Evolution cartoon, the the goth Rogue on that one. That kind of reminded me of the one that, that uh, I liked when I was a kid. So uh, I, I liked that one an awful lot too. But like I said, this one seems to be the most popular and the one that people generally think of when they think of Rogue in the first place. Anyway, we will talk to you next time. Bye.